Welcome everybody, my name is Falonir and this is the beginning of a series I like to call Learn to Leorn Board 2, where I go over basic concepts and things you can do inside Leorn Board so that you can use the program a little bit better. Today we're going to start off with variables. Variables are a way to take information, hold it, and then utilize it somewhere else. Think math 2x equals 6, x is your variable, x is 3. Except in Leorn Board we can make x whatever we want and then use it somewhere else. Hopefully that's not too confusing. I'll show you how to do it. Now, this is Leoran Board 2. If you do not have this, I will have a link down in the description where you can download it. Then just follow step by step as I go through this guide. And if I lose you, you can pick up where you left off. So inside this button right here, I'm gonna give you three examples of how to use variables. We have global variables, local variables, and something I like to call deck variables. We'll start off with global variables. So we'll hop in here. A global variable is a variable that can be used in any deck in Leorn board. By default, all variables are local. So if you create a button and then create a variable in that button, other buttons can't use it. This lets you make really easy naming conventions for your variables so that you don't get things mixed up between stuff. Our example here, we're going to set a global variable. You can name this whatever you want. So we have test global var for variable and we're gonna make it equal just the number 40. To use this variable, we would have it wrapped with the backslash and dollar sign on each side. But to use a global variable, you want to preface the variable name with global dot. So if your variable name was test, then if you wanted to use that somewhere like in a Twitch chat message, you would have global dot test um, all wrapped up in your um, in your dollar signs and your backslashes so we can test this out save hit save let's open our stream deck we'll connect to this real fast this is inside learn to learn board two open up now if i press this button it's going to do whatever is in the button this is your stream deck version of the program kind of like your elgato stream decks i press this and our chat message <laughs> includes Pokemon apparently, um, but our chat message is 40. So if we go back and look in here, edit commands, we set the variable to 40 and then the message was just the number 40. That's what we got there. So let's go into our variable to button. Here, you can use the get global variable command to pull a global variable to use in your button. To not get too technical, this is essentially setting your global variable as a local where you don't have to use the global dot pre prefix um, if you want to use that variable as if you were going to use it in a message. So get global variable. The variable that we're getting is test underscore global underscore var and we're going to save it as the same thing. But when it saves it, it's going to save it as a local version. And then we just use test global var. You're better off most of the time using your global prefix. So global dot whatever. Uh, but if you have a lot of messages and you don't want to use the global prefix, just use the get global variable command to pull that variable and then set it essentially as a local variable in your button. And if we delete this right here, we can test that out. So let's hit two. 40 is higher than 20. And just to show our message was global variable is higher than 20. We know that test global variable is 40 because we set that in the other button. Now let's talk about local variables. As I said before, local variables are variables that are only used in that button. So if you name a variable in one button and then name it the same thing in a different button, as long as they're local, they won't interfere with each other even if both things happen at the same time. They're, they're completely separate, they don't talk to each other. So let's look into this. We have the set local variable command. So I have test local var equals 15 and then test local test local var wrapped. So we make sure to use the information in the variable and not just those being letters. Um, local var is less than 20. So when we you, when we hit this button right here, it should tell us that 15 is less than 20. Now to demonstrate again that they don't cross over uh, across buttons. We have local variable two. We're going to pull that same exact variable, but it shouldn't tell us anything. So we open this, hit this. 
undefined is less than 20. And that's because this button doesn't know what that variable is. Uh, it, it has no idea what test local var is because it hasn't been established in this button. However, what we can do, if you see at the top here, we have ID 16. That is the button ID for this button. What we can do is another prefix, kind of like globals. If we do ID 16, what it's going to do is it's going to look in that button for this variable and give us that information. So double save. Uh, to, if you make any changes, you have to save twice and get back to the screen. Otherwise, your changes don't take effect. Well, hit here, local variables too. 15 is less than 20. And that's because now it's pulling that variable from button ID 16. Now, let's take this one step further and let's talk about something I like to call deck variables. Now, if you create an entire project in one particular deck, you may have variables that you want to use across different buttons. If you have a thing that triggers a different button to do a thing that maybe triggers a third button to do a thing and you want that variable to be shared across all of them, you may want to make something I like to call a deck variable. So let's go into this deck. I've called this button test. And in this button, we set four local variables, var1, var2, var3, and var4, and we assign them these values, 1, 5, 10, and 20. Now, in this second button, we want to utilize those variables. In this case, we want to use them in a chat message. So what we do here is we have message test.var1, var2, var3, and var4. Test is the name of that other button. So I change the name from ID 17, whatever the number was, uh, to just test. So that's the button ID. And we're calling that ID to look for this variable. Now, in addition to this, I'm also doing the set local variable command because I want to take variable one and change it to two. But in order to do that, I have to give it the prefix of the button ID. So test.var1 is going to change to two. Then it's going to tell us what test var1, var2, var3, and var4 are. So we're going to hit save, hit save. We'll do button number two. <laughs> Sorry, I have to enable the first button to create the variables. And then the second button is 2, 5, 10, and 20. So the first button created the variables under those numbers and the second button recalled, well, recalled four of them, but changed one of them as well. And if we go in here, our third illustration is setting a local variable. We have a new variable we're going to call variable five or var five, and we want it to be the same thing that variable one is. We have to make sure that we preface it with test dot and then the variable name. The yellow boxes, you don't have to wrap it for the box to know that this is a variable we should be looking for. To give you an example, var6, if I put this in quotes, it's essentially a string of letters. This is just telling the program that these this could be a word, could be a phrase, could be a series of letters or numbers back to back. It's just a string of information. And then what we're going to do here is the last thing it's going to tell us what var5 is, which we've already established in this button it's going to tell us what var6 is. So var5 should tell us the number 2 because variable 1 in the test button is set to number 2. And then var6 should give us just these letters var1. So if we hit save, hit save, come back in here and hit uh, this button, we have 2 and var1 because it thinks this variable is just holding the string var1, all in lowercase. So Decide as you're making things, do you want them to be global? Do you want them to be local? Or do you want to create a system where you can very easily track variables across one specific deck by giving a button with a very simple deck name um, that you can preface for all of your variables for that? Um, if you have any questions, please let me know. There will be more videos that come in this series, go along with arrays, objects, all that kind of stuff. Uh, if you like this video, please don't forget to subscribe hit the like button and do follow me on Twitch as well, where I stream three nights a week, doing all kinds of really cool stuff with the on board. Uh, come in, ask questions, hang out with us. We have lots of fun. If you like this video and you want to know more about the on board too, click this playlist at the top to see the next video in my series. Otherwise click this playlist right here to see some of the really cool things that we've been making for the on board one that we will be transferring into the on board two. So stay tuned for those updates as well. Have a great day.